Hello people of the internet, this is the Painting with Commentary for the Nozzle's Marvelous Miniature Giant Spider and Egg Clutch, episode 25 of Paint to Life. This episode was quite fun and interesting as we had a bunch of elements that weren't part of the model, so let's get to it. Starting off with a quick cautionary tale. You can see here in this quick sped up footage of me painting all the different colors that I had planned to use, some black legs, some orange some red put it all together here off as i went i was going to do some blending and make like i don't know fiery legs <laughs> and uh let's get some orange in there too yeah 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 orange is good and uh, a little bit of yellow and blend it all together and and i'm like yeah this, this is looking a little okay weird and then i just realized i don't know what i'm doing and the while it might have turned out okay the mistake that i made is a mistake that you know you can sometimes make and it's not to have source material in mind when you're painting you're just going for it now that's fine if you want but i still recommend that you find some source material and work from that to kind of guide you along just so you have something cohesive so i went online and started looking up spiders and i found some wolf spiders and i settled on this picture as my inspiration for how it was going to go but then while i was researching i found pictures of things like spiderlings tiny little baby spiders and i said oh wouldn't that be cool? And I thought of my son, he calls them broccoli spiders when he sees wolf spiders in our garden with all of the babies on the mother's back, like in this picture here. Suddenly I had a concept. I took that orange, red and black model to the sink, washed off the paint. And when it was dry, I started coating it with the dryad bark. Now with the concept in mind, I'm going to an end game that I'm going to be happy with. Now you don't need to have a concept end game in mind, but it certainly helps. Especially if you hit these, um, you know, these walls of creativity uh, where they dry up and you're kind of stuck. Um, also, you can see I'm painting over the orange. Um, I also kind of realized at this point that the base was impeding me and I didn't even really want the base. So, as with most nozzles, if you're going to, mini miniatures, if you're going to do some kind of crazy base, then you want to pull this off. That one kind of came off like a gum gummy. So using some XPS foam and my handy wire cutter, I took the plate that it came with and I cut out a circular pit. My concept here was the spider was going to be rearing up over like an edge. So using the spider as a as template and using the styro cutter, I got nice and thin on the bottom and I kind of tapered up to the end. Now, acetone in the spray bottle, this is a great idea if you're using XPS foam. Put a little bit of acetone and some nail polish remover into a bottle, and when you spray it on, it will melt away the foam just enough to give it a nice porous look. And instead of having flat surface, it's just one way that I like to use to gouge that out without. You want a spray bottle because if you put too much on, it'll eat right through the foam to the bottom. So I'm just going to prime this pink with this craft black craft paint, just cheap acrylic black craft paint don't need to use your good stuff on this there it is and that'll take a while to dry now using some milliput to make our cocoons milliput as you've seen me use before is a two-part epoxy you kind of blend it together and then you can shape it sculpt it whatever it dries rock hard like cement in about two hours i usually leave them overnight and i'm putting these lines on them using my tools just to give the effect of like a cocoon uh, or spider web because these are going to be my cocoons and then I kind of shape them a little more bulbous on the bottom a little more tapered at the top for a head maybe for where shoulders and hips would be you know it's not the perfect science but they don't have to be just have fun with it yes these are going to be cocooned people um, that our spider is going to have trapped for its brood and um, I used a knife as well to slice because my edging, you know, just, just make some sharper edges. Um, something for the cobweb to stick to later. Alright, so these are our cocoon victims. And I'm going to set them aside overnight to dry and they'll be ready. Now we're going to mix some white glue and water 50-50 uh, together to make a, a wet um, mix. Now I'm going to use some toilet paper and water. I fold the toilet paper in half. This is going to be the base for our our cocoons. So put some sand in it. You don't have to use sand. You could use milliput, but sand is cheap. I'm just adding some of that glue to it, and I'm folding this up and making it into almost like a spitball. 
it's saturated with the white glue and water Put a little bit extra on as you can see it looks very soupy but that's going to dry quite hard and it's malleable now it'll dry into a nice shape now we're going to use some hot glue on the thorax of our spider to put on little drops that are going to be our spiderlings. This was the idea that I had from the source picture. How am I supposed to make spiderlings? I'm certainly not going to paint them on there. So no, I used hot glue and it dabs, trying to keep the circles concentric. That was no good. I pulled it off. And that loose filament that comes off the glue gun, see it like this, the rope, the spidery? I'm just kind of making circles, figure eights, dragging it on top of itself because when it's all done and it's all massed, I want them to kind of represent the legs of all the spider legs. So don't worry that that filament or that thin glue is sticking around. See, put a drop and then I spin the gun. I kind of wrap it around all of his brothers and sisters and, and make sure you spread them out far enough. So later we can add another dollop to represent like a little teeny head, which is what I did later. I don't think I filmed it, but there you go. So all these go on in the back of his head and he is ready. Now we're going to dry brush some Dawnstone on this dried base. You can see I pushed down a hole where the spider's going to go. That's why it's still pink there. So like uh, a nice dry brushing to get this to look more like a cavern. And I also going to put on um, another color as well other than just black and gray. It's one of the browns that's coming up here. I can't recall what's up hand. Uh, Golf egg brown. Yeah. So that just makes it look a little bit more dirty down there. And I would have done more to it, but obviously I'm going to fill it up with eggs and cocoons. So this is the egg clutch that came with the spiderling. So just very carefully using um, black paint, I'm just going to paint around the bottom, being very careful not to touch the clear plastic that makes up the eggs and the web. By going around black when I set it on the base and then use a little bit of dry brushing on this edge, it should just bl blend in and look like it's part of the rock that and now this is the new tesseract glow technical paint they released uh, it's you know for Necrons and Warhammer but it goes on green very neon -y, and it has a yellow undertone which can come to light that's how I painted all the eggs so now I'm doing some sylvanith bark on the legs just a dry brush just to give those legs a difference of a color like to our uh, source spider kind of uh, put that all over the place it's pretty cool again it's a very rudimentary paint job I know that yellow, orange, and red one that I started the video with might have looked cooler, but ultimately I've moved past that. The base and the story and the spiderlings and the cocoons is going to make up for the fact that this is just a brown spider. And um, I'm totally cool with that. And especially dry brushing all this on there to, it doesn't bring out any texture the way some of the cooler models does. It just, um, it, I mean, I guess it does when I talk about it. <laughs> So now Sylvaneth bark dry on the spider legs. You can see all that filament that I left behind. Now it kind of looks like a mass of either web or legs. Very cool. And some gold flag brown on them as well, just to give them a couple dimensional, a uh, couple layers. So now we're gonna use some craft white paint on our um, on our cocoons. Again, the white paint craft just because it's a throwaway. Ungore flesh. This is what I put under. I tried to do a pattern on the spider per our source picture in the beginning. It was okay. It was pretty striking, in my opinion. Um, I liked it, but when I ultimately contrasted over top of it, it almost disappeared. It's hard to see in the pictures, but if you look at it in real life, you can see this color that I'm putting on right now pops through the contrast paint just enough that it looks kind of creepy. Like this was okay too, but, um, you know, I mean, teach their own. I guess I could have left it. Maybe just dirtied it up with some Nuln Oil or some um, Agrax Earthshade so it wasn't so bright. And also in this example, I went up the back because I, um, I already put all the spiderlings on. I'm like, oh, I should have done the thorax. So I tried to go between it to continue this theme all the way to the tip of the tail or butt. But um, ultimately, I just painted over that later because it was just too much in the back. So I, I yayan I and then yellow. I should figure out how to say these things. Um, the contrast paint, the yellow on top of the spiderlings to give them that kind of yellow crunchy f texture. Saigor brown. Now this is a contrast brown that I put on top of the spider. As you can see, it kind of completely obstructs that that color and I'm putting it all over the dry brush. Saigor brown is a very dark brown, just like a lot of the contrast browns, but it has a red tint to it. 
And I didn't actually know that, I just thought I would try it. You can see, maybe you can see, it looks somewhat red and that was really effective. I didn't go on his belly, I just kept it on his legs and on the top of his, on the top of his back and his face. I left his belly still dry brushed. And then I put it in between all the spider rings, just dropped it in there amongst them. Not on top of them, I like the fact that they look yellow and I just wanted it to be a little bit more brown red underneath. So next up we have this base that we made earlier which is now rock hard. We're using hot glue to glue it in place. This just looks like a base of webbing. Maybe there's bodies in there too. Uh, it's not. Qu it's rock hard on the bottom, the top is still slightly malleable. I have these little teeny stones, uh, smaller than the gravel that I usually use. But first I need to paint this. I should have painted it before I put the cocoons on, that's okay. I was excited to put those cocoons on there. You can see them both white. I just have to paint around them now. So paint this again with the craft black. And because it's toilet paper, it's going to absorb into that nicely. And then I'll just dry brush some gray onto that as well so it stays kind of like the base beneath it. All right, and now to the webbing. So I made a mixture of 50% glue, 50% water again. I put it in there and then I took some Halloween spider web and I soaked it. You can see it over there. I soaked it in that glue. Now I'm trying to pull it apart and drape it over these cocoons to make them not look like white pieces of hard milliput, but instead they are indeed white with cobwebs. And because the cobweb is somewhat thin and transparent, the white underneath shows through as well as the lines that I made. And then, just like you would decorate for Halloween, I took the spider web and I kind of stretched it out and tried to make these little tie-offs where the cocoons would be tied to the base, to the stones, to the ground, and to each other. And this is just go with it, man. Just have fun. More or less to each, your, to each their own. However much you'd like to do is up to you. And you can see in the areas where I tied it off, I put some dots of white glue on there. White glue tasty. And every single one of those dots, I'm going to take a stone out of my teeny little patches of gravel that I keep. See them all there? And I use uh, tweezers, and I just put one on each little white dot there. Um, angle it accordingly. Now, sometimes you can put ground cover on and then color it later, or... Um, dry brush it or base color but this is these are truly stones in that cave in the cave okay, nice in that cave floor is full of stones and the spider web is tied to it so I put a stone on top of the web and later I'm gonna br brush it over with another glue water mixture just to lock it all in and so when it was done I put the eggs on that's the egg clutch that came with it you can see the tesseract uh, glow and on the fangs as well I also put some um, some clear coat brush on gloss on the finish like a liquitex product on his fangs on the eggs as well on the backs of the spider rings so look at how refractive that they reflect the light you can see also in that little web clutch there's some um, white some more spider web on the base and those other loose eggs are guess what just more dabs of hot glue just like the spider legs legs eggs uh, oh and one other thing I missed that dry brush, I finally finished the Saigor Brown contrast paint. See how the leg has kind of a golden look to it? I used a Sybarite Dry from uh, Games Workshop on the leg. I figured even though it's gold, this is my wife's idea, even though it's gold and that's a little weird, it almost makes the leg look translucent like a real spider or hairy. You know, so it's, it's just shiny enough that maybe that's light coming through on the backside. And of course our finished cocoons look great and because I tapered the top it looks like a head and shoulders and the body. So there he is, there are his spiderling babies, I, or her spiderling babies. That was uh, Ari Ariacne from episode 25 of Paint to Life. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll reply to you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Wash your hands, folks.